So, first of all, tomorrow we're going to have slichas right here, even after the second, the, the second minion. First minion for sure, you're going to have slichas, right? 545, first minion, second minion. Slichas right after. We have these little sheets here, if you want to see what we're going to say. I don't know. It's not all of it, I don't think. Okay. Also, Shir on Rosh Hashanah itself. The first day Rosh Hashanah at 4.30. And Minchas at 5.30, not here, next door. And the second day Rosh Hashanah, Shir is Matzah Yantev. First Shir is, and I want to be the first one to say this. I was learning the daf today. I think it's incredible. Last year, when we were learning the daf on Rosh Hashanah, the, the daf was about Rosh Hashanah. This year, I think it's incredible. You heard it here first. Tafshin Pei Beis is going out. Tafshin Pei Gimel coming in. Daf Pei Beis, Daf Pei Gimel. I think it's incredible. Uh, so the first Daf, Amotze Yantev is Pei Beis. Second Daf will be uh, Pei Gimel, sorry. Pei Gimel, you're right. First, first shear on Pei Gimel. Second shear on Pei Beis because Pei Beis is already going to be said on the first day of Yantev. 9.30, like tonight. Dear Belly, this coming Sunday will be Rafal the Barber's one year anniversary since joining MDY. This is from Yochan and Itzkwit. Right after Itzkwit, he will, Bezir Hashem, finish his eighth Masechta since starting with us. As I'm very proud of his accomplishments, I can't help thinking about my own journey with MDY. I started at the end of Erevin coming from a small Dafyami Chabura, which I sadly left during COVID. As soon as quarantine was over, I tried several online shiurim, but none of them worked for me. When I heard about MDY, I, was, I really wanted to try it, but I was nervous about joining a shir that had 3,000 people in it. I believe that was how large it was back then. I was coming from a history of small chaburas where the members had achdos, were a small and were a small little family. How was I ever going to form a kesh with so many people? I tried out one shir and was hooked right away. Then I started going to some live shirim and meeting a few of the chevra. And although I never met them in person, I felt like I already knew them from the emails and the shiurim. Fast forward almost two years. And Baruch Hashem, I'm proud to say that MDY is my second family. I would say first family, but my wife may hear this. <laughs> may hear this. Last Friday afternoon, just before Shabbos, I was talking to Yossi Klein on the phone. And I happened to mention that my son was traveling with the Muncie bus on Muncie Shabbos to come back to Brooklyn for the first night of Slichas with my Rebbe. He immediately became upset at me. Yoichinen, that's how he pronounces it. Yoichinen, how do you have a son who's learning a Muncie you don't tell me? Make sure he calls me right after Shabbos and I'll drive him to the bus. I tried to argue that it wasn't necessary and I was going to Uber him to the bus stop, but Yossi wouldn't hear of it. Not only did he go pick up my son from Yeshiva, but he sat with him in the car until the bus came so he shouldn't have to wait by the bus stop alone. Then he called me to let me know that everything's okay. and he ever needs anything Yeshiva, to let him know right away. When I told my wife about this, she couldn't believe it. But I could. This is MDY. This is the Achtos, the Chesed, the Avaz Yisrael, and the beautiful message that our group with you at the help. Spreading through Al-Qa'i Yisrael, I'm very proud to go into Rosh Hashanah being a part of this wonderful group. Thank you, Rebellion, every single member of the MDY team for giving us all a chance to head towards the Yom Nirayim with some extra protexia. Have a ksiv chasim toiva, yoichanon, itzkewetz, yishkoyach. Dear Rebellion, the entire MDY team, wishing you and your family only the best of everything always. Thank you for all you do. You give me chizuk and focus daily since Yuma. Pay vav. Chasiv chasim toiva, good kibben shior, your Talmud, Glenn Band. And the Koilo is sponsored for the success of our family that we merit to always crown Hashem. The Masech is sponsored. Lili Nishmas is Baruch Ben Moshe Aaron. Lili Nishmas the Lozer Ben Not the Shalom. And for that Slocha Bechol Anyanim for my children. Got just before I came to Shir, like a very disturbing message that Jeff Rosner says that his son needs a tremendous Rachim Shemayim, inoperable brain tumor. In Schos of my son, a yeshiva bachar comes home limping a little bit. In Schos of my son, Yosef Simcha Chaim, Ben Sarachana, Rufua Shleima. Maybe we'll say some tilim after Shir. The rest of the Sefer, the official mitzvah motivators, Avram Menashe, Ben Chana, Brocha, Rufua Shleima. The sponsor of the month, Lil Nishmas, Chayyeb Ben Moisha. Second sponsor of the MDY family, Lil Nishmas, Ezra Tuvia, 
Yaakov ben Esau Yitzchok Ezra Palazol Vashal. Third sponsor by the Lack and Loving family is Lakewood, New Jersey, because Toira is the best Segula. Fourth, Parnas Achoyish Rufu Shleim Yecheskel ben Leia. Fifth, Parnas as a Schus, that Hashem should watch over me and ensure that I'm completely healthy. Admei Ve Esrim. Today's sponsor, Gedalia Miller, Miller Hatzlocha, Reb Eli and MDY family, Hatzlocha, Keshen Nafshi, Shabbaton, Israel. Okay. I got to make up my mind if I'm going there or not. Keshen Nafshi, you guys know what that is? Abba Renert. In honor of Rebelli and all the Heiligi Yidin who thought that they couldn't do it and then did. Shkleich Abba Renert. Avram Shia Shnek 20 Daf. He's taking it upon himself. Rabbi Yisai, it's almost Rosh Hashanah, so if you kind of committed to learning for Avi, it's almost there. But learn it no matter what. Okay, we're holding by the Mishnah, the first Mishnah. On Ayin Tesamit Beis, a little bit less than halfway down. The official mission is sponsored by the MDY Till, no, by Moshe Horn. You forgot to send it to me. By Moshe, by Moshe. Moshe Cohen. Schos for? Hatzlacha in Parnasa? And Mechol Anyanim. Navdu la'avodim u'shvacha yizkenim. So we're talking again about the different properties that Shalom Aleichem. What's your name? Shalom. From? Lod. Over here? It's Israel. Lod. Wow, wow. Where's the oil from? We have, we have a lot of seats here. We have a bunch of seats all the way in the front. Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Zayn. Just starting here. Okay, so... Huh? Yeah, no, no. They need Gemaras. Give, give them some Gemaras. Okay, so the woman has Nechassim. The Nechassim, the principle belongs to the wife, the Peirais, the produce that comes off the Nechassim goes to the husband. What about slaves? So you have a slave. Slave produces. The actual slave is. Where are you guys from? What's going on here? Came in from Yerushalayim? Give that Zev. Okay, that's pretty much Yerushalayim. Shalom Aleichem. You look very familiar. What's your name? Ah, let me check it out. Okay, Shalom Aleichem. Wow. This is the first time in person though, right? No, I mean here in Cheer. Yeah. Wow. Rebbe and Torah Vadas? What's that? Yeah. Givaldik, wow. Where's his son? Where's the Bar Mitzvah? He left him at home. Very nice. So these are your sons? Two friends. Wow, okay. Givaldik, okay. I don't want to embarrass anybody here. And Shalom Aleichem, you are from Lachem Shtal? We're from? Paskir Tzafer. Okay, a bunch of Israelis here. Givaldik. Now we have an issue. You have Old slaves. So either the, according to Rashi, according to Rashi, either the husband or the wife, one of them is concerned that the slave is going to drop dead. And there's not going to be any value there. Either the wife is nervous, she's not going to have any principal left, or the husband is nervous, he's not going to have any pay rise. So one of them could force the other one to sell Yimachru. And what do you do with the money? You buy some fields with it. And the husband gets to enjoy the payrus. She could put her foot down, even if the husband is concerned that he's not going to have payrus soon. She could say, Look, I grew up with this slave, made in South Africa, made. I grew up with this person. I don't want to sell this person. It's, it's sentimental, it, it, it gives honor to my father's family. I don't want to sell it. Same case almost. Trees that on their last leg, olive trees that are old, older vines. Again, the wife says, I don't want to sell them. He says, no, you need to sell them. Or He says, I don't want to sell. She says, we got to sell them. They're, worth, they're going to be worthless next year. So you sell them and whatever profit you have, you buy real estate, you buy fields. And the payers go to the husband, the principal remains 
the wives. Over here, it's not Reb Shem Gamliel, it's Reb Yehuda. Reb Yehuda jumps in and says, same thing that Reb Shem Gamliel said in the Reisha, Reb Yehuda Oymer, Leitim Korb Neishem Shevach Beisavia, even the vines, the, the vineyard, has a certain prestige for the father, for her house, for the, for Mishpacha, look, we own this famous vineyard, sentimental, whatever you want to call it, she could say, no, I don't want to sell it. Omar Rav, Kain Omar Rav. So the Gemara's Havamina was in, in the name of Rav. If it comes with a field, in other words, this, this ground, and there's a tree that grows there, and if there's no more tree, at least she'll have a principle, the field itself. So you have Machlaikas. But when the, she doesn't own the field itself, she inherited a tree alone, standalone tree. And once the tree is gone, she has zero. Then, according to everybody, you sell it. Because the, there's not going to be any principle left. Masculine of Yosef, Yosef has a bomb kasha. We have two cases in the Mishnah. We have a Mishnah of the, the case of the tree and the case of the slave. But a slave is a standalone human being. He doesn't come with any base. He doesn't come with a field. Once he's gone, he's gone. Yet there's a machloikis, even in a standalone object. So a standalone tree should be the same thing. It should be a machloikis, even if it doesn't come with any property. So yeah, you're right. We have to say, you have to say a bracha. Okay, a little different. What Rav was saying is there's a machloikis when there's no field. But when she has a field, there's no field. Once she owns the field, now you have the problem of the sentimental value of the, the honor it gives the family. She could put her foot down and say, I don't want to sell it. The Elegant Mishnah is sponsored, the official Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen. It's a great year. So again, the, does anybody recognize this tie, by the way? Nobody? Bell works. Bell work. No, it's it was yeah, this bell works and the day I was on it was the same day. It was the hour before I was on the Ami cover. I didn't wear it in like three months. <laughs> like a woman. Can't wear the same bag as <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can I forget? It's a big mural in my house. Yeah, I know. You're you and that other guy that framed it. Yeah. He gets Nixemilog. Now he has to work the field. He goes, he buys a 400000 dollars tractor, thinking his big cherem is gonna buy. Now he doesn't have to rent one, he buys one, and then he takes out like ten thousand dollars worth of fruit. He invests a lot in the field and he pulls out very little food. If he has a tremendous hatzlach, a lot, a lot of fruit, like that video I saw somebody, I think I mentioned in Shir, this uh, non-religious guy said that he's never seen anything like it. Without watering the date trees, they pulled out unbelievable produce, which he said it's, I don't know, I don't know anything about dates. He said that without water, they usually don't, they a bunch of duds. This year, beautiful tasting dates. So he didn't invest even in water, and he was able to pull out all these dates. What did that guy say? $15,000 per tree, or $5,000, a, a lot of money each tree. Pulls out a lot of dates, or a lot of fruit. Doesn't matter how much he invested, they have a deal. He gets all the produce, he just has to invest in it. It doesn't matter how much he invests, he pulls out. If he spent too much, it's his problem. Too little, her problem. If he pulled out zero, but he's able. He put money into it. In that case, he swears and he takes money from the wife. He gets paid back. As long as he eats a little bit, he has to suffer the consequence. In other words, he invested a million dollars and he took out one dollar. Too bad. That's it. He loses the million. Omer Rabasi. Afilu gregeres achas. Even one dried fig. 
as long as he eats it relaxed, at a table, sitting down slowly, normally, that's the shear. So, just because it's Rosh Hashanah, the Avi and Hillel, they're telling me they once went on a cruise and the, the price was very good. It's like, like literally like $500 a person. For, but, but it's unbelievable, all the food. But the way they get you is on drinks. Anytime you want a drink, boom, they get you. And there's other things that they get you on. There, there, they, they, know, they know what they're doing. First they get you in, they lure you in, then they get you in drinks. If this is Rabbi Yisrael's Salanter. This world, if you take a drink, you, you have gashmis, you have a little bit extra than you need, the loss is tremendous. The hefzit is, it's like this Mishnah. You have, if you take a little bit, a little bit, you lose everything. I don't know if you lose everything. Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, the Vilnagani speaks about it. In benefiting in this world, using Hana in this world, you lose a lot of Yoyalam Haba. Unless, Unless you work on the cruise ship. If you work on the cruise ship, then you're, you're part of the cruise ship. So then you take drinks, you eat, you do whatever you want, it's all free. You have to work on the cruise ship. If you're just a, a guest on the cruise ship, then they, they get you real good. So the muscle is that if you work on the cruise ship, you come to this world and you bring more people to Torah and your, your focus is serving Agash Baruch Hu, then the Hanas, then even the, the Gashmias is free. They don't get you on the Gashmias. But if you're just a guest here, you don't, you have nothing to do with anything. You're not, you're not involved in Torah. You're not involved in getting other people to Torah. You're not Rafal the barber or whatever. He said, ah, you had that steak. You didn't have to have it. They charge you big time. Says the Gemara, Omar Rabbi Abba, Amir Bey Rav. Say the name of Rav. Afilu Shigro de Tamri. I think it's Ashgach HaPratis, we're right here, right before, everything's Ashgach HaPratis. Right before Hashanah, bringing, talking about the dates, and of course I've been on a, on a mission now to, to help the Eilam. Um, who's, Mendy was all upset, why, why am I talking about the, the pomegranate? Why not? I asked to know, because when I lived in America, I have to show you this. Shigra the Dikla is this thing right over here. You see this date cake. That's even, it's a, it's a cheap kind of, I guess it's the, the leftover days, whatever. But I need to tell the Eilam that when I lived in America, I hated dates. I never liked the date until I found the dates here in Israel. They have them all over the world. But I guess, so I, this is a community service announcement. Here, these are the types of dates. <laughs> you want to go with the one on the left. What are you laughing? The one on the left, the majul. You got to look for the majul. If you eat that, it's like candy. You're gonna, you're not, even not on Rosh you need it. You know, it's not like the head of the fish that you put in your mouth and you're, this is the real deal. So I think in America they go with the uh, ajwa. I don't know what they're doing here. It's like other stuff. Look, do they sell medjool in America? I'm sure they do. But in Rosh Hashanah, that's not what the island buys, right? They buy the, the, the shvach stuff. What? Those who know. Now MDY knows. All the island MDYs. It's nice, juicy. Some of the, here they sell it in the refrigerator. It has to be refrigerated. It's a whole thing. Okay. Just thought I would let the Eilam know. Yeah, you have to make a brach on it first because it's one of the Shivas Aminim. Another thing that I got very into pomegranate here in Eretz Yisrael. I don't know. Also, it was not, not as gishmak there. Okay, they have good fruit here. What? That before pomegranate. That before pomegranate because it's on the top of the list of the thing. Wow. Psh, nice, nice. Also, I need to show you this Lushan and Rashi here. Very interesting. I like, I like these interesting Lushanas. Rashi, like, I don't know, eight lines down. He says, the girsas shoitim hizu. I just thought it was interesting. Nothing special. I mean, it's the interesting lashon. It's the girsa of idiots. Okay, great. Let's go weiter. <laughs> what? What did you say? I don't know what Boy Rav Bivi. Chufza de tamrimai. If somebody made beer out of dates and, pr- and pressed it and pressed nothing left. What do you have? A bunch of skin and not- it came out nothing. Is that something that if the husband eats, he loses a mil- his million dollars? Take him. What if he ate a bunch of dates and he was really hurried? He was stuffing them down his mouth. He was not, he was not enjoying himself. He was not by the table, like, like Rashi explains, it has to be nice by the table.
Stop. What are you looking up over there? I just want to see if they get on the Majul. On the Majul? On the Girsa Shaitan. Rabbi said, I mentioned Shlafrag, Shamshi Shlafrag, a number of times. Here he is. He's Matsi Shav as he comes. Shamshi Shlav, Shkoyat. Tamat Chacham. Loyach, he's looking up stuff for us. Okay. Loyach, Loyach, Kavimai. So, what's the sheer? How many of these dates? So, he's, oh, he's running around, but he stuffed his mouth to 25 dates. Isn't that worth like one date? Be'ishav adas by a table? Omar Ula, Pligi, Botri, Amaroi, Bimarova, Chad Omar, Biki Isar, the size of Isar, 124th of a dinner, but Chad Omar, Biki Dina, no. It's a big machlaikis. 24 times the amount of the first man, Omar. Okay. But there's a certain cheer that you eat, and if you eat that cheer, then the husband is liable for everything. He doesn't get paid back. I thought I should have taken a picture. I had a picture, but I forgot to take on Shabbos when I was learning it. What animal eats vines? Only, only one, only, I, I only know of one animal, an elephant. What animal eats branches? Most, what? No, they eat leaves, I think. Not a big mumcha, but... Little I have seen, they eat leaves. Anyway, Rashi says pill. So what if he didn't eat dates? He didn't have his own benefit, but he gave the benefit to his animal. He took vines, he took branches off the trees and he gave it to the animal. Says Rabbi Yehuda, that's enough to make the husband lie. He invested a million dollars. The guy didn't go to that he doesn't know. And he decided, okay, I'll take six, seven branches, give it to my elephant. That's it. He doesn't get his million dollars back. Had he not given the elephant any branches, he would have retreat, he would have recouped his million dollars. Rabbi Yehuda Tamei Dom Rabbi Yehuda Achla Arla. If we're talking about Chazak here, the famous Cheskas Shali Shanim, if you sit in somebody's field and you eat the crap, you eat the apples off the tree, and you're there for three seasons, three years, it becomes yours. What if the first three years that he's in the field, it's Arla, he's not allowed to eat the tree? So instead of eating the tree, he took branches off the tree and he gave it to his elephant. That's enough. That shows that he owns the field. So no one could come after him and say, hey, I was quiet because all you did was you used branches and I'm not mocking. No, branches of chazak. What about shviz? Rabbi Isai, you hear, the, you hear what's going on here? Shviz. We're literally on the last day of Shemitah. Last day of Shemitah. Here we go, shviz. I want to remind the Ilam to write a prusbal. Write a prusbal. The... the the first minion wrote a prosbul on Friday. The second minion is going to write one tomorrow. It's better to write tomorrow. It's close to, close to Rosh Hashanah. I also want to point out that there's an a inion to lend a pruta. Give somebody a shekel. Give somebody a dollar and say here. here. I was going to lend you 50 shekels. Do tomorrow. Do tomorrow. And if he doesn't, get it, if he doesn't take it back from me, he's mekayim the mitzvah of Shemitah Sksafim. It's a mitzvah. There is a to let Shemitah come. So now, because we do a prusbul and we're not doing that mitzvah, so there's anything to give. <laughs> Does anybody else want to be Mekayim the mitzvah with me now? Why is it any different than Masa Because over there, you never know if she'll take you back. Most likely. I know if I was Megarish, my wife will say, Adios! It's a, I don't know, try it. Let me know how it went for you. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I wish I had my wallet on me, Avi. I would do it with you, but I just. <laughs> okay, anyway. There's such an Indian. So, again, Shemitah, why does Shemitah not work? If one of the. Obviously, Shemitah is not three years, Chazak is for three years. One of the three years of Shemitah, I come into the field and I start eating. Apples off the tree, it means nothing because the whole world comes in there and eats apples. But if I come in there and I start grabbing branches off the tree, that shows it's mine because nobody's allowed to touch the branches. Here in Ez Yisrael, I don't know if you had this chus yet coming here, you go into a paradise, you go anywhere you want, you take a straw, you can ride off the tree. <coughs> Big signs there say, please don't ruin our trees. You have to be careful. People come and they start twisting the esrog right off the tree. They don't come with a snipper. Ruin the guy's tree. They work all year long to make sure that everything's perfect and the thorns and the this, literally all year. And then the people come in there and they, they ignore the signs. With the signs, they're schlepping and ripping. It's mine. It's unbelievable. But you're not allowed to take the branches. You're allowed to take the fruit. I 
My Zeshoya today, I knocked on my neighbor's door. Luckily, she didn't open up. I wanted to, I said, I came to her, I wanted to say, I'm going to, I'm going to ask her, hopefully her husband, say, it says on, when you walk into my building, there's, she has a, she lives on the first floor and she put up a sign and it says like this, all the cows are hefker because she forgot to put a yud in there. So it says all the parais are hefker. I want to ask her if I could take one of her cows. Like, what do you mean a cow? Like it says cow. Oh, you mean pear? Okay, whatever. Baruch Hashem, she didn't open up the door. No, seriously, I'm, I'm going to knock. I'm still going to do it. All right. So, again, so take using the wood is a chazaka. Uklaim. Klaim means if you have a vineyard and you plant, according to everybody, if you plant wheat, some say even other vegetables, if you plant wheat in your vineyard, the fruit is also, the grapes are also bad. No. But if he uses, you're not allowed to use the grapes. He uses the vines themselves. That's a chazaka. I raise a chazaka. Oh, so according to Rabbi Yehuda, that using the, the, the wood creates a chazaka. So a meila, it also creates a usage of the field. If the husband uses wood and gives it to his elephant or whatever he does with it, then that's it. He had enough from, from the field. And any expense that he had is too bad on him. He doesn't get it back. Or maybe I give him Rav Chizda. What if he married a minor because her mother married her off and it's only the Rabbanon? We explained this a thousand times in the last year. She, Chacham didn't want her to be Hefker. So they gave the mother a right. Even though the rice is not a good marriage, they gave the mother a right. And she can do Miyun. So he goes and he starts working the field. Chacham said that everything, all his expenses are paid for. It's like, Now, we have to just explain this halacha quickly because we're going to be touching this halacha. If somebody goes into somebody else's field and works the field, without permission even, and this happens, I'll give you a mashal. I think there was a Maisa Shaya, or even if not, it's very, a guy orders an air conditioner. He says, I live on the first floor. I'm putting the key under the mat. The air conditioner guy comes and he picks up the mat, he finds a key, goes into the house, installs the air conditioner. The guy calls him up in the evening, he says, no, when are you going to come for the air conditioner? He says, I installed it. He says, no, you didn't. Turns out that the guy picked up the wrong mat. He picked up the mat of the neighbor and he installed the air conditioner for the neighbor. Now what? Who? Does the neighbor have to pay for the air conditioner? What? That's what we're talking about. So it depends. If it's normal to put in air conditioners and this is what he was about to do, so he gets, he has to pay for the whatever is normal. But if not, then he only pays for the expense. So in this case, if this katana's field was ready to be planted and worked, so he would get like an RS, he'd get whatever the, the going rate is, a third of all the profits. If not, all he gets is the hourly rate or whatever he worked for 20 hours, he gets $100 in Shalom Yisrael. So this guy, he's married to Akhtana. You don't say, oh, well, he, he, he ate. He did. No, it's a little different. Why? My time. We don't want the husband, this guy, to be concerned that any minute his daughter, his wife, this Akhtana, is going to divorce him, do a meal to him, send him back home. So he's going he's gonna to ruin the field. So we don't have to ruin the field. We say, listen, you're going to get paid back nicely. Just do it. You're going to love this story. There's a woman who, they sent her a telegram. Some shliach said, listen, your father, bad news and good news, your father died. The good news is he left you 400 zuz. Shmak, okay, how do I get it? She's married to one of the biggest chachamim of the generation. Azal Gavra, her husband goes, Apik Shismeya. He spent 600 zuz in order to pick up her 400 zuz. Okay? I see Arbemeya. Listen, he's not such a big shaita. There's half the people that live in New York, they're the same shaita. They drive all the way to New Jersey so they can fill up a little gas. And it costs them $45 to get there and two hours of their drive. And they come back and they forgot that they, they already had, you know, three quarters of the thing was full anyway. Kids, a lot of shaita like that. Or the famous mice of uh, the, 
this, this is a, you know, it's a fictional story, but the, around the world in 80 days, I was familiar, the guy made a bet that he's going to go around the world. It's an it's a old, old story, 150 years old. He's going to go around the world and, and he bet his friend they could do it in 80 days. And, uh, and if he wins, he'll get 20,000 pounds. At the end, it cost him like 50,000 pounds to go around the world and he missed it by one day, something like that. Okay, anyway, a lot of shaitan. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it was because of the dateline. Had he gone the other way, he would have made it, but because he missed the day, he went this way. And the, 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 huh? No, according to the mice, I think he got married. He found a wife, but he didn't get it. I don't know. Okay. I ain't chum. It cost him more. Zogdi <laughs> Yamara. Um, I see Arbema. He brings back the 400. Now he has a box of 400 with him. Again, 400, usually a guzma, means a lot of money. <laughs> the poor guy, he wasted all his money on the trip. Now he has zero. But he has a box of her money. So he goes into the box and takes one zuz out of the 400 and he uses it for Uber. So now he comes to Rebami. You know what? Tough luck. Because you took one zuz out of her money, that means you benefited, like, like using some sticks, some, some branches. That's it. Now you lost everything. Had you not touched that box on the way back, we would have paid for your expenses. But you did it. You, t- you, you used one zuz. Too bad on you. They got divorced, obviously. And now they're coming to... He wants to get paid up. No, you made a mistake a little bit. This is the story is slightly different. That's if the husband dipped in to the produce. Oh, but over here he's dipping in, he's taking from oh Rabbi Yehuda is here. He's taking from the principal. Okay. So this is a guy that spent a lot of money and didn't eat. He swears how much he, he spent and he gets his money back. Let me ask the Olam, a Shailah, how much money does he get back? No, anybody? How much money does he get back? He spent 600. How much money does he get back? Anybody? No? 400. Very nice. Close. Who says anybody else? 600. Anybody? Anybody else? There's another number. 399. Very good. 399. He gets only up to the amount, which is for him, but he already took out one. It's a trick question. He took one, so now it's 399. Very good. Over here, again, it's Ere Rosh so we have to say the famous, famous marshal of the Chavetz Chaim. It's like there's a guy. That all the kids, everybody was talking about this guy. They called him a shaita, like Rashi says, shaita. Why is it shaita? Because he went all the way from, I, don't, I remember, the Pisha book, whatever, the, the, the place was. He went from Radin all the way to Vilna to get a Shmek Tabak. You know what Shmek Tabak is, right? Here in Israel, everybody, I, just in case you don't know, it's this thing right over here. Everybody, you know, the plastic one. They don't even do it in silver here. It's a, a little snuff. For one snuff, he went all the way to Radin. So the Chavetz Chaim said, all the way to Vilna and back. Chavz Chaim said, you know what? We're the same thing. We come all the way from up there. It's a very, very long trip. And what do we come down here? For Shmek Tabak, Mamish, for a few bucks to make a million dollars. For nothing. If you come here, if you, you go on a trip and you, you, uh, you matzliach, you bring back real schaira, great. That's what happened over here. This guy went all the way over there, only... To spend more money than he came for. That's the guy. Tayr is the best chayra. In the Mishnah it says, he should swear how much he spent. And by his shvua, based on his shvua, he'll take from the wife. So Ravasi says a line that we have to understand what he means. It depends if... There's more, there's more profit or equal profit to this to the expense. This could go against the husband and it could go for the husband. So we have a machlek is what it is. 
Let's say the the profit was more than the expenses. This is good for the husband. The husband doesn't have to swear if the profit is more than the expense. It makes no sense what you're saying. Let's say the profit is $1,000 and the expense was $50. So you know what he's going to say? He's going to say the expenses were $9.99. He'll lie. He'll go all the way up to the profit, minus a little bit, and then he's going to collect the $999 without a shvua. That's not fair. This goes against the husband. If his expenses were more than the profit, then he could only go, like in our case with the guy that spent 600, he only gets 400. The expenses is as much as the profit and no more. And he has to swear. Says the Gemara, Yibayilu. The husband is like a sharecropper in the field. Instead of him doing the work, he decided, you know what, let me hire outside service. And the husband ate a little bit. We must say that he ate a little bit. When he eats a little bit, what happens? Now there's no cheshman. It doesn't matter how much you spend. He doesn't get anything back. It's a loss. So the question is, did the sharecroppers go into the field based on him? So if the husband gets zero, they get zero. No, they didn't go in with the dance of the husband. They went in for the field to work the field. So they should get paid like a regular share crab. They should get paid a third. Either zero or a third. Do we go based on the husband? The husband brought them in there? Or do we go based on the field? The, the case of a person going into somebody else's field, installing an air conditioner without permission. Yeah, so we, we see how much the whole thing is. And then we give him the least of the two. We give him the, the expenses or the, the, the profit of the field. Whatever is less. Hasam. Says Gemara, like in the Torah, hachik about the Torah. Says Gemara, no, it's worse than a case of me going into somebody else's field. The artist who goes and works the wife's field is worse than a regular guy that goes into somebody else's field. Why? Because she could say, "I have a husband. My husband would do for free. If my husband eats one date, that's it. I don't pay him at all. So who asked you to come into my field and work the field and I have to pay you a third of, the, of all the profits? I have a guy that's going to do for free." If he's a good farmer, so he'd probably work the field. If he's a good farmer, he could work it. So they come instead of him, and she can't, and she has a good taina. She says, Listen, I have a good farmer husband. But if he is, I don't know, he's in Kailo, he doesn't know anything about farms. Then the field is set up to be worked on by a typical sharecropper. So let her pay the, 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 the going wage of a sharecropper. Yeah, it's, it's ready. She wants it to be worked. In a case, if she doesn't want it to be worked or she wants something else planted there, then they only get the expenses. But if she wants it to be worked and they planted what she wanted to be worked, she has to pay like a regular going wage. Ibailu. Baal Shemokha Karkala Peris Mao. Very interesting, Shaila. The husband, as we said, he gets all the produce. The, the wife, she gets to keep the principal. Goes as Chacham and makes a great deal. He's going to sell the karka a 40-year lease. He wants all the money up front. It's a great deal. Could he do that? Since he owns all the produce of this field until he gets divorced, he sells it right now. Me, Amrino, Maidikani, Akni. Whatever he owns, he gave over, he sold. Why did Chachamim say that the husband gets to the produce even though he doesn't own the field? It's hers. In order that 
he brings in money on a, on a consistent basis. I was a bunny law. Yes, you're right. Now he made a million dollars. But you know what happens with a million dollars? You know what the people, when they, when they win the lottery, they don't have uh, consistent income. She doesn't want that. She wants every month, she wants money coming in every month. She doesn't want a big giant sum in one shot. So, so we see here, until now we were talking about, why does the husband get pay rise? What do we say? The home sechta. Because he's responsible if she gets kidnapped and he has to, he has to pay the ransom. Over here we see another svara, second svara. She wants Parnas in the house. She's willing that he gets to eat because he's going to work the field. She's going to bring in a consistent salary. In honor of Yankee Baum and Moshe Horn, Brocho, Vatzlov, Cholanyon, and Magutki Ben Chiar. In honor of my uncle, Rebel Cholan Pressman. And as a schos for a year filled with Mazel, Brocha, Atzlocha, Simchas, and Parnas of Ah. And as a schos. I thought it's a schos for a Cholan Pressman. Now he, I think he wants to, I'm learning it differently. It's his own schos, maybe. Okay, whatever. Everyone, everyone. I good to mention everybody. Rap Papa, I don't know if anybody's going to be here tomorrow. If they are, great. If not, I, I should mention, I need to ask Doyle Mechila for Mother Shabbos coming late, wasting your time, insulting people, getting on your nerves, whatever it is. What? <laughs> are you Michael? <laughs> Gary, you Michael? Especially you, I have to ask you, Michiel, and there's a bunch of people in here. Where's David Feiner? Feinberg, what's his name? <laughs> Not remembering his name. <laughs> I ask you, Michiel, for that. Okay, Bamis, be Michael me, please. Machalach, Machalach. I have a story that I was debating if I should say because it makes me look really bad. Maybe if you remind me tomorrow, maybe I'll say it. I don't know. Yeah, okay, it's, it's a long shirt tonight. We'll say it a different time. I'm still debating. It makes me feel it's very vulnerable. Sorry, I skipped. Two lines down. If the husband goes and sells, great. If he sells all his payrolls for all the years, it works. So I have a chlaikis. No, you can't do it. One year at a time. One crap at a time. Over at Papa. How do you do my rema? Love the very shit, my. Says Rab Papa, you should know, because Rab Papa Amar Meshmei the Rava, Amar Rab Papa, how do you do by my Right. So Rab Papa is arguing. He says, I heard from Rava. You do by my who says in the name of Rava, I'm telling you, says Rab Papa, he didn't hear it from his mouth. It was a different. He heard a story, and he's being medayik from that story. It's not fear. I heard it from Rava's mouth. The what? This, by the way, I despise this guy. I hope he's not a Talmud Chacham or something. I, I, I really don't like the story. There's a guy who his wife brings in two slaves into the marriage. So first, not such a nice thing that he did. He goes ahead and he marries another woman. In addition to that, this Mchutzef, I locha the minayu. He takes the slave that his first wife gave him, he gives it as a gift to his second wife. Can you imagine? Gosh, this wife is, she's furious. So what does she do? She screamed. He didn't pay any attention to her. Okay. Because, you know, stop screaming when you dive in and you scream, that doesn't do it. You have to have kavana when you scream, right? You have to, have, you have to know what you're talking about. Man the chaza sabar. So those who saw it, Mishum the Sabah, Mashal say also. Oh, that's why Yehudim Mar, Barmerei Mar, he thought, maybe that's what he thought. He saw Rava saying, no, get out of here, because the husband has the right. He can go ahead and sell as he pleases. Veloi, that's not what happened. Mishum Revach Beiso. The whole point is that we want that. Why could the husband share in the, in the produce? Because we want a consistent salary. We want something good for the house. Yes, you're right that he took the slave and he gave it to, to the second wife, which was not such a nice thing. But that slave is still going to produce for the house. At the end of the day, they live in the same house. And yes, she's a private slave to that woman, but she also makes breakfast for everybody. And she does the laundry and this and that. So it's good for the house. 
The halacha is that if the husband goes and takes the, the, the field and he sells the, the produce, only the produce of the field forever, it's garnished. We're concerned that, and Rashi says something very interesting. You know, the field, fields have nutrients. And even today, in order, when you, when you grow crap today, you, what's the word? You, um, you use up the, the, nutrients. the nutrients in the ground. So what they do is today, they, they use fertilizer and stuff like that. Rashi talks about fertilizer. If you don't fertilize the ground, you could, you could deplete all the nutrients. I don't know how it works and if it's an everlasting problem, maybe you could just throw, it seems like you're ruining the field. You would think that, you know, it's just ground. Well, no, you can ruin it. And if it's not yours, you don't care about it. That guy that, that bought the payers, he doesn't care about my field. He's just going to take whatever produce he has and he's going to ruin my field. And I can put my foot down. Rav Omar, Mishum Revach, Beisa. The reason why you can't sell off the payers forever is because you're not bringing consistent salary. My benayu. According to both shitas, you can't do it. It's not a good mechira. But what's the, what's the nafkemina? If it's very close to the city, so the wife can keep a good eye on it and see if the guy is fertilizing it or not. And make sure that he fertilizes it. Inami bal arasu. If the husband, her husband, he sells off all the paris, they do that a lot. You know, you sell a business, but you, you work in the business. You make sure, you know, they, they keep you on for a little bit. So they, they're keeping him on to be the artist. He'll make sure that they don't destroy the field because it's not good for him. Because at the end of the day, if the wife dies, he gets to keep the whole field. He, wa- he wants to make sure the field is good. Inami, Zuzi, he made a lot of cash. Because of Uiska, and he's doing business with it. So it's good for her. If she sells it for millions of dollars, and he's able to bring in a, a steady income, that's also good for her. The official Mishnah is sponsored by Moshe Cohen. It should have a great, good kebench yar in everything. Says the Mishnah. So why not? <laughs> Go back to the famous case here. We have Ruvain who's married to Rachel, and Ruvain has a brother called Shimon. And Ruvain was not here ever on Matzi Shabbos. He could always show this thing on Matzi Shabbos. He does one of these, he goes sideways. So Rachel falls Liibum. Falls Liibum. But he wasn't a Yabim her yet. He's deciding. She's a shtikol Yushalmi, he's a shtikol uh, Amerikanish, it's not such a good shidduch. So he's debating, he's debating. But Maisa, she, she has fish and chickens, or whatever. So either he does chalitza yibam, but in between period, there's a zika, there's a bond. Is that bond like a marriage, like Erosin? Because we had a whole mission before. If there, remember the four cases that the Rishkoil missed by one day? The four cases, Erosin does it. Is it like Ayerson? Are they engaged? Not engaged? What's going on? So that was in, in Yavamas. We learned that it's not, there's a little bit of a bomb and not so much. As she's waiting in the wings to, for Shimon to make up his mind, she inherits a ton of money. She's not considered engaged. She has no connection to Shimon really right now. So she go and sell whatever she wants. Mesa, what if she dies? Mayasu biksubasa. So very interesting, Rashi points out that the word ksuba over here, until now in ksuba we're learning, what does ksuba mean? Ksuba means the actual 200 zuz or whatever is in the ksuba, plus all the additions, not here. Over here it means that also, but it also means nichzei soim barzel, metal sheep. You see, metal sheep. What does that mean? That when she brings things in, he takes a chryas for it, Whatever the price is, the nursing home, as they get married, that's what he's going to pay her back 30 years later. You buy a nursing home in the 70s, it costs $10,500. In 2022, when they get divorced, he gives her $10,500 on a $300 million building. That's how it works. There's insurance. It's a guarantee. And it's called Ksuba because it's in the Ksuba. You write it down in Ksuba. Versus Nixon Milug, we're talking about the whole time Nixon Milug, we're going to mention in a second, that's something that he doesn't take any achrais, but he gets to use the pay rise. Nixi Tzayim Baraz is more like his, says the Mishnah. So if she dies, what should we do with the Tzayim Baraz? What should we do with the whole Ksuba? And the Nixi Milug. The Nixi that come in to the marriage, go out when she gets divorced. 
For this, you also need Rashi because it mentions a bunch of things in the Mishnah. It mentions Sain Barzal, the Ksuba itself, the Tosefes Ksuba, and Nifsim Elod. All those things said Rashi, when Beishamah is saying Yachloiku, he's only talking about one thing only, and that's Nifsim Elod. Okay, just to write it down in your Gemara if you can. Yachloiku only on the Melod, not on the rest of the stuff in the Mishnah. Yachloiku Yershei Habal in Yershei Av. Also, interesting Lashon. Yershei Habal means who? Who's the Yerush of the husband? Her husband, her late husband that died, who's the Yerush of him? The Yavam. Yerush HaBaal equals Yavam. Im Yerush Av, it should really say Im Yerush HaIsha, but it means the father of the wife. Okay, it's an interesting Lashon here, just to mess with us a little bit. Yerush HaBaal and Yerush HaAv. So there's a, right, there's two families fighting for, for, for what's going on here. The, the family of the husband, the late husband, they want everything. And the family of the wife want everything, so they do a yachleik. Beisil oimrim on the nixim elug. Beisil oimrim nechazim bechazkasan. Which one? The chasim over here. Now we're doing a little bit of a switch. Why not? The chasim is referring to soim barzel. Ksuba refers to nixim elug. So over here, the chasim means soim barzel. Bechazkasan. What does bechazkasan mean? So bechazkasan lachari means Rashi brings that it's a machleikus. That's why it doesn't mention in the Mishnah exactly what it is. It's in the Chazak of where it could be. And in fact, the Shukhanar Paskins in this, that's a Machlaikis. Uh, you do Yachlaiku, sorry. You do Yachlaiku. Because of Achlaikis and we don't know what to do, we do Yachlaiku. So Bechaskasan actually means Yachlaiku according to Shukhanar. Again, the Chaz Bechaskasan doesn't mention is it the Bao or I think that's, that's why you say that the word Chaskasan means it's a Safek and you do Yachlaiku. Uksuba. Now over here we're talking about the real ksuba, becheskes yer she'abal. That goes to the husband's side because he's holding on to the money. Nechasim ha nechnasim ha yoytzim ima, the nechsim milug, becheskes yer she'ab. That goes to the wife's side because that came from the wife's family. So it goes back to the wife's family. Hini achav imais, achiv imais, if the brother who died left cash, yilaka bem karka b'oichal peres. You buy real estate and he, the yavam gets to eat the produce what if it's not cash, it's just fruit. You log up in we had this before, similar case. You buy real estate with the fruit, and it gets to benefit from the produce. Have a mekarka, if it's attached to the ground, Omer Meir, Sham Moisan, Kamen Yafan, we had this halacha also. How much is a field that has, let's say, uh, uh, the, the grain grew one third? How much is worth without that grain that's a third? Kamen Yafan, Hain, Begama, Hain, Yafan, Beloy Peres. And whatever is left over, you buy the difference. With the difference, you buy real estate and you eat the fruit. We're just going to do it until the end of the Mishnah and then we'll prepare for tomorrow. Chacham say fruit that's attached to the ground, that's the husband's completely. The If it's detached, Whoever comes first. Kodamu Zacha. The Yavim grabs it. It says, Kodmahi, interesting. Again, you need a Rashi for this. What is Kodmahi? When did she grab it? You'd never believe this. Rashi says, only when her husband, her first husband is alive. So you take it and you buy real estate. Kansa, once a Yavim marries her, so in this case, when Shimon decides to marry this Yushami lady, Harei, he, she's his wife, and we had this in Yivamas, she turns into a regular wife. Meaning, what if he divorces her? She's really a sister-in-law, and you're only allowed to marry sister-in-law in one condition, that the brother died without children. So now he is Mikhail in the midst of Yivam, then he divorces her. Isn't he still a sister-in-law? Isn't she still a sister-in-law? No. Once he marries, she turns into a regular woman, a regular wife. Mikhail in the mitzvah, you hear Menachem? Mikhail in the mitzvah, Machzik Mishasoy. But the guarantee for the ksuba, that is on the first husband, her original husband's belongings, even though, guess who owns all his nechasim now? The brother who does the yibam gets all the Yerusha from the brother. He doesn't split it with the other brothers. But the guarantee, right? So you have two brothers, you have Reuven and Shimon. Reuven left a million dollars. So the ksuba of the yivama is on that million dollars. Shimon is Miyabim the Yavama. He gets all the million dollars. 
Now he's married to her, but he also has a million dollars. Her ksuba cannot be uh, paid off from his from Shimon's million, only from Reuben's million. That's the Allah. Well, if he doesn't have any money, there's no money left, so then you go back to Shimon. So we have to understand what the difference is really. This is a very interesting Allah. Allah is like this. The million that, let's say Bill Gates. Bill Gates, how much is he worth it? I don't know. $130 billion, let's say. He leaves over, what's that Chaita's name? Okay, we don't even want to say her name. Melinda. Okay, Melinda. Melinda's the Yavama. Bill Gates' brother is Miyabim the Yavama. Guess what? He can't touch the $130 billion. Why? Unbelievable Allah. Because he owes Melinda $3,000. The, whatever Ksuba is, let's say, let's call it $3,000. It's time to make the Maisik mortgage mark. $20,000. He cannot touch the $130 billion because the $130 billion is there as a security to Melinda. You hear what's going on here? $130 billion and $20,000. So what is he going to do, this guy? He's going to take $20,000 in cash and give it to her. Here, here's the Ksuba. You know, if we ever get divorced, here it is. No, I don't want it. You're scaring me with it. You, what, are you saying you're going to divorce me? No, I don't want it. So he doesn't touch the... So what's the Eitzah? There's only one Eitzah. Menachem Atez Eitzah. You divorce her, and you marry her back. That's it. There's no other Eitzah. He's stuck. He wants, he wants the 130. It's right there in front of him. Can't touch it. Yeah. She, you got to be careful. What? Why not? Yeah, yeah. That's what we just discussed a second ago. All the money of the Yavam is, goes towards the Ksuba, is there for security. He shouldn't tell his own wife. You know what? Don't worry about it. Here's some cash. Let me show you. I'll put it inside. Everything is there for the wife as well. So by this Yavama, when he's Megarisher, it's very interesting. She only has a Ksuba, meaning the Ksuba is still, when he takes her back, is still from the, the original husband. And when he takes her back, she's like a regular wife. She only gets the ksuba from the first guy. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful, if I don't see you, a wonderful year. Shkoya, hold the guest. Shkoya, shkoya.